And welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my weekly recap of stuff I've been watching and what I've been playing and all that usual fun stuff. So let's jump right into it. So to start it off, this week's cover image was again generated in Google Gemini with the description of a samurai viking zombie in space to cover everything that I watched. So I'm going to start it off with my favorite show to return so far which is the walking dead the ones who live this in this case it's season one episode one years um so it was a very packed episode so we get to hear and see what rick has been up to since the explosion at the bridge we find out that he's been working for the crm he's tried to make several escapes they they're trying to get him to um join up and be in a position of leadership so all in all good stuff uh, we get a little bit of context for uh, where those pick phone cases with michonne's face have been coming from and we also get a comic book tie-in where he cuts off his own hand so a lot of connection there as far as um of um, comic book tie-ins and then on top of that we also get the reunion with Michonne so we um I wasn't really expecting that to happen this early in this um season but I guess it turns out we're probably gonna have or what it feels like we're gonna have is a episode by episode recap of what's been going on the past few years and tie it all together at the end so the first episode was all about Rick the second episode I assume is going to be all about Michonne and then from there it's hard to say what's going to happen or now that we're all caught up on both of them the rest of the season is going to be about maybe taking down the CRM or Rick's taking over of it or anything like that um, otherwise, I also had a chance to watch the um, season premiere for Shogun, so I had a chance to watch the first two episodes, but I did end up finish watching them shortly before recording this episode, so I didn't put the usual um, short up with a hot take review, but overall it was a very interesting start. Uh, it's very slow paced, so just know that going into it. It is subtitled versus, versus dubbed, so you are going to get a lot of it in the, um, in Japanese with the English speaking guys speaking English but then again everyone from Europe is speaking English so a little bit of compare and contrast there um, so you're gonna have to do a lot of subtitle reading um, the only downside to the first episode was I really didn't like the acting for the Dutch guy was okay but I thought it, I kind of liked it, just didn't like his portrayal of it but in the second episode it was actually a lot better so um, stay tuned through this end of the second episode and that'll correct itself but as far as everyone else goes it was all very well done so I can't wait to see more but just know that it's very slow paced and still very interesting but very slow paced. Um, I also had a chance to watch Star Wars The Bad Batch, a different approach so the third episode and it's more about um, Omega's and Crosshair's escape. Um, and they do ultimately end up meeting up with um, Wrecker and Hunter. So we get that connection. Um, they were, they're able to find each other. They've been trying many, many times. And the different approach was trying to do a lot of the escape um, Omega's way and then ultimately switching over to Crosshair's way and it ultimately working. Um, I did also have a chance to continue watching a few episodes of Vikings. Um, didn't really make too much progress, but I did get through the episode where we get the death of Lagertha, so very um, heartbreaking episode there. Um, definitely recommend watching it, um, if for nothing else, but we finally have, like a lot of the stuff that's happened since Ragnar um, left and since Ragnar's death happened, um, she, you, get, you get to see a lot of that emotion and weight of all the stuff that she's been through over the years so there's that and then also the weight of um, Bjorn and like losing now losing his mom after losing his dad so 
you now see that you know in the first episode i think the main characters you have left are floki and bjorn so um i think also maybe rollo but i forgot what happened to him but um now as as far as the ragnar bloodline goes it's only all about all of his sons um so with that being said as far as the android uh review and tip for this week i wanted to share something that's one of the few annoyances i have on android and that's the heads up notification so when you are uh, when you have heads up notifications and you're getting a lot of messages, for me it's super annoying because, you know, it's email and text messages and streaming apps and like, all these different apps have pop-up notifications for various reasons. And it's not limited to the ones I said, but, you, you know, it's one notification after another. And if you're in a conversation where there's a lot of chats going back and forth, it's consistently distracting to have to see those notifications, especially if you're doing something else like reading a book, watching a TV show, or just trying to do something other than looking at those notifications. So this week's tip is how to turn those off but still get the notification. So I'll have a link in the show notes to the um, video on how to do that. It's really simple. You essentially just have to long press on the app you want to turn it off for. Click on app info under manage notifications you're going to uncheck banner so that way you still get the notification you know via your default notification and vibration settings but you're not going to get the pop-up banner that shows up for that app so that way um you'll still get notified that there's a notification but it won't distract you if your sound is on the main downside is that if you do have um messaging apps that act as your um, phone call system or you get phone calls via your messaging app you're not going to get that pop-up notification. You'll still get the, you know, ringtone and all that, but you'll have to swipe down and click answer. So just something to uh, make note of there as one of those things that I found. So um, keep that in mind when you're turning off the banner notification. But for me, for the most part, turning those off is fine for all apps just because I need the notification, but I don't need a pop-up every time it comes in because usually I'm doing something that doesn't require looking at it right that second, but it also is like um, double notifying because I'm getting the sound and I'm also getting the banner. I don't need both because if I'm going to look at it anyways, then I'll see it there and open the app. So I thought I would put it out there for anyone who's interested in um, setting that option and being able to um, make that adjustment on a per app basis. So to round it out for this week, um, as an update to the Knights of the Old Republic gameplay, as of this recording, I'm now done with Dantooine. So I finished the Jedi training, went to the lightsaber or the crystal cave to get the um, crystals to upgrade the lightsaber. Um, in this case, since I'm playing the light side, I saved Juhani, so she's now part of the party. Um, the only thing that doesn't stand out in this gameplay is because if I'm playing as a Mandalorian and then fighting against the Mandalorian Raiders on Tattoo or on Dantooine doesn't really make sense because you'd think he'd want to um, have them join his party, but then also if it's like rival clans and they're, they don't want to join up, then they'll fight and that makes sense. But it is resolved in the second, in Knights of the Old Republic 2, in that... Um, because of how all the Mandalorians are scattered, you can go to all the different planets and have them meet them meet up with them on Duxin. So it's kind of a self like a ret, not really a retcon, but it's like a pseudo retcon because even though you can't do it in this game, you can take care of it in the next game. But that's really the only thing that doesn't stand out. But um, now that Dantooine is done, it's a matter of going to all these other planets and finding the star map and all that. Uh, one of the things I don't think I mentioned before, I don't remember if I did, is in this gameplay I'm also going to be playing the Brotherhood of Shadows um, mod for the game. So once the gameplay is done through the Leviathan, by going back to Korriban you can start that gameplay so it's an extra set of content. So I'm going to be playing that and seeing how I can add that into um, the story and gameplay of having playing as a Mandalorian, but I thought that I would bring that up now. Now that I remembered, if I because I wasn't sure if I brought it up or not, but um, there will be that. But that's much later, towards the end of the game, prior to going to the Star Forge and finishing up the stuff that's part of the end of the game. But uh, with that being said, the next up um, to of the things to do in the game are going to Yavin Station to um, beat the Rodian at Pazak to uh, get a discount on his goods and. 
get better armor and hardware and things like that. So um, that'll be next. And then going, I'm planning on doing Tatooine next. I kind of like doing that next. And then um, Manan and I forgot which other, and then also Kashyyyk. But I forgot if I do Kashyyyk before or after Manan. Um, I'll probably do that Kashyyyk second to last just because um, it's not necessarily a hard level, but it, it doesn't. It's about the same as Manon. It's about the same, so we'll see when we get there. And then, of course, Korriban is last, last, just because it is the hardest level. So um, that's kind of the gameplay setup that I have going on now. But with that being said, that's all there is for this particular update and review. Um, all the links will be in the show notes. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, you can visit the social media site or uh, comment on the post on social media by visiting the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, gameplay videos and all the videos are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash n zero one. And you can support the show by visiting patreon.com at patreon.com slash n zero one for um, early access to the podcast, uh, video versions, all that stuff, as well as long as well as the ad free version of the show as well. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.